everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how I'm going to get my new puppy comfortable wearing her harness as well as when the leash is attached to the harness. I'm also going to include some video tutorials at the end on how to go through all the different steps for the different behaviors that I'm going to show you. So one, the first initial behavior is teaching the dog to have the harness put on. Now, a long time ago, when I made some YouTube videos, it was over 10 years ago, on how to put the harness on, I was convinced um, by the training that I'd seen online and read in books that first the stimulus has to happen and then the reinforcement follows. The problem with that is, is that if you go to try and put a harness on a puppy, most likely they're going to back away or bite it. So to begin the initial training, you're going to be giving the stimulus and the treat at the same time. Now that's kind of like clicking and feeding at the same time, so a lot of trainers will think that's a big no-no, but what it's doing is that I'm putting the harness on and off of the puppy without the puppy backing away. So you want to use an extremely high value treat. And if you have a very sensitive puppy, you might just spend a couple of training sessions just feeding the puppy out of the harness like this. But as you can see, as I continue to drip feed treats to the puppy, I take the harness on and off. So the puppy is getting conditioned to this thing going on and off, and they're not doing other behaviors like biting at it or backing away. So once you've done that a couple of times, you can then start to see if you can put the harness onto the puppy's head just before they've gotten to eat the treat. And as you can see, she kind of backed away. So she might not be ready for that step yet. And for the next few times that I train her, I'm simply just going to, every time I put the harness on, feed her as it goes on and feed her as it goes off like that. Good job. Another thing you want to do is feed her continuously as you clip the harness together. Now, because I only have two hands, I'm going to put the treat down like that and then clip it on her and tell her how good she is. Yeah. Oh boy. Yay. Good job. Good job. Yeah. That's great. Now, sometimes as soon as the harness is on the puppy, they turn around and they want to bite at it or they're very interested in it. So what you can do is put the harness on and then do some other sorts of training. Say, for example, you're teaching sit or something like that. You can then start training your puppy so they're getting used to being focused on something else and highly reinforced while they're wearing the harness. Don't just put the harness on and let them wander around the house because perhaps the dog will habituate to it, but some dogs will turn around and think it's a chew toy and chew on it or um, be hyper-focused on it. For example, if you were wearing um, uncomfortable clothing, if you're just sitting in your house, you're going to be hyper-focused on how uncomfortable you feel, but if you went to a party, you wouldn't be thinking about that feeling. So what you can do is also put the harness on just before a walk. Hey, little one. The other thing you want to do is get the puppy used to the leash moving around. Now, most puppies will go for a leash and bite at it. If you have a puppy that doesn't do this and they completely ignore the leash to begin with, then you don't need to do this step but I would do just a couple of repetitions before you even put the leash on the puppy. So what I'm doing is moving the leash around, good, and marking and reinforcing, good, the puppy for ignoring this stimulus in the environment. Because what's going to happen when they're on a leash is it's going to jiggle near their face. I personally like to clip the, har the leash to the harness at the back of the dog rather than the front because the leash will dangle at the back rather than the front or specifically on a collar. I don't suggest using collars to attach a leash to because of the delicate neck of uh, young puppies as, as well as adult dogs, but um, there are a lot of harnesses that clip at the front and um, you can use them, but for the first few walks until the puppy ignores the leash, I would clip the leash at the back of the puppy. Good job. So I'll link the whole tutorial on how to teach the dog to ignore leashes and to ignore dangly clothes. Um, say, for example, when you're going on a walk, your puppy might want to bite at your, um, at your pants or if you're wearing a dress or your shoelaces. So it's important to work on those first um, in little training sessions so that you set your puppy up for success to being a perfectly well-behaved puppy. 
The problem with just ignoring it and letting the puppy do these things is they can quickly become a habit. And just in one trial learning, the puppy can be like, wow, shoelaces are the best, or oh my goodness, that is a tug toy that I'm attached to. I find it extremely important to teach puppies what's going to happen to them when they do hit the end of the leash before they're out on a walk. So I'm gonna show you me training my little puppy, the leash pressure game, but then I'm gonna link a full tutorial after this video, at the end of this video, so you can follow that tutorial and what to do if things go wrong and how to add criteria. Hey, little one. My little puppy and I are going to be working on the leash pressure game. However, she's so small, I couldn't find a harness big enough for her or a leash that didn't have such an enormous buckle because at the moment she's still nine weeks and she's only two and a half pounds. So um, I have her in a makeshift harness and also I have a lanyard <laughs> as, a, as a leash for the moment. Um, so we're gonna work on the leash pressure game and at first, I'm going to feed her a treat as I touch her harness like that. Because what I want her to learn is that when you feel pressure on the harness, it isn't something terrible that's happening to you. It's just predicting that food is coming. So at first it's not predicting food is coming. I'm just feeding at the same time as I touch her on the harness and in the area where the leash will be attached like that. So that she doesn't start to have an aversion to that feeling because most likely, if you haven't done this with a puppy and then you go out and they run and they hit the end of the leash, it can be very frustrating or irritating uh, that they can't get where they want to go or they just don't like the way it feels. So instead of seeing what might happen, you're feeding as it happens for the very first time and that's proactive behavior management where you're not waiting to see if something bad happens, you're just training with in mind that everything's going to be a positive experience and that the puppy's going to be confident every step of the way. So she's doing really good with that. She's really good with handling, so I expected that. Um, so you can practice putting on a little bit of pressure like this from uh, with the puppy in front of you pulling towards you like that and then pulling back so that the puppy's getting used to the way that feels. So after the puppy is comfortable with you doing these things as you feed the treat, you're going to delay the treat. So you're going to do the pressure, good, and then feed a treat. You can use a clicker for this exercise, but as you can see, uh, if you're feeding with one hand and holding the leash in the other, it's awfully close to the dog. So unless you have a helper clicking, um, it's better to just use a marker word. So my marker word is good, and you can see good, that she's not having any issue. A lot of puppies, when they're behind you and they feel pressure like this, as you walk forward or they sit and perhaps you're trying to move them to come with you, they're going to lean the other way. Most puppies will, and some will actually lay down and look really stressed out by the fact that they're being pulled by their chest or their back. So um, before, I can just imagine that this puppy's not gonna like it without any training. So what I'm gonna do is put that pressure and then lure the puppy forward. So she's getting used to the concept that if she felt the leash get tight, it just means to move forward to loosen the leash. No big deal. The next game that we're gonna play is the leash pressure game with a distraction down on the ground. So this is gonna be very hard for her because so far in her life when I put a treat down or there's something on the ground, she's just been able to run over and, and investigate it. So now this is the first time she's been on a leash where she's prevented from getting where she wants to go, which can be very frustrating as you can imagine for dogs and people. If you put a little kid on a leash, and they're, and they're used to running around playing with things, they're, they're gonna get frustrated and stressed. So the point of this game is to reduce the animal's stress when these things happen to them for the first time and teach them how to be confident and comfortable and practice impulse control when we have to obey leash laws. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna put the treat down over here and I'm gonna use my attention noise to get her back with me. Now, if she didn't turn to come back with me, I can lure her back so that the leash is loose. So basically, um, when you play this game, the dog should start to ignore all the distractions that it can't reach. So the leash is all nice and loose. I'm gonna move the distraction a little bit so it makes her pull again. 
use my kissy noise and my treat lure to get her back if she doesn't think to turn back and I can mark and feed her for continuing to ignore whatever that is on the ground. Good. 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 Up, up. Good. 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 The leash pressure game. Hi everybody. This video is on the topic of teaching your puppy what to do when he feels pressure on leash, either when he's run out and hit the end of the leash or when you've had to add pressure. Say, for example, your puppy runs into the road and you need to move your puppy out of the road using leash pressure. Now, of course, you can pick your puppy up in emergencies, but if you have a puppy that's going to turn into a larger adult dog, at some point in his life, you're gonna need to have to move your puppy with the leash. Now, without any prior training, most puppies and dogs, when you pull on their leash, they one, find it aversive, and two, usually lean the other way. The same with human beings. If you had a harness tied around your chest with a leash coming out of it and someone pulled on it, you naturally would counterbalance by leaning backwards rather than just following whoever pulls you. So basically, in this exercise, we're teaching puppies that when they feel the pressure on the leash, it's simply a cue saying, come with me, we're moving in a different direction. And by creating a positive association with the feeling of pressure on the leash, it simply becomes a cue for the dog to want to move with you. Now, if you work on this exercise with a young puppy right from the beginning, before the puppy starts pulling a lot on the leash when you're out and about, it actually can teach your puppy to walk on a loose leash. This is because if you work on the exercise enough, your dog is going to have a conditioned response where they feel the pressure on the leash and it will cue them to come back to you. Here are some exercises you should work on first before playing the leash pressure game with your puppy. This is because you want to reinforce your puppy for moving towards you, moving with you, and moving with you when you make direction changes. And once you've reinforced all of these behaviors, it will make it way easier for the puppy to want to choose to move with you when you add the leash pressure. In my opinion, the four exercises that you want to work on first are the attention game, the recall, reinforcing your puppy for standing next to you and walking next to you, and reinforcing your puppy for direction changes while walking at your side. Check out the written description below for links to video tutorials on how to train these. This is footage of one of our first outings to the park. After letting my puppy explore and sniff the park, I spent one to two minutes playing the attention game, reinforcing the position at my side, and direction changes. The leash pressure game. Step one. Add light pressure on the leash as you lower your puppy forward and then feed a treat. The point of this step is to accustom the puppy to the sensation of the leash pressure so it's not a sudden surprise. I suggest attaching the leash to your dog's harness when you play games like this as well as walk your dog. If you're going to be walking your dog with the leash attached to the front of your dog's harness, you need to work on this exercise with the leash attached to the front as well as the back. Keep an eye on your puppy's tail and make sure it's in a natural position and the puppy is not tucking their tail. If the puppy starts to tuck the tail, you can work on games like the attention game, the recall, as well as handling exercises rather than working on the leash pressure game yet. Step 2. Put a distraction down on the ground that makes the puppy pull on leash. Use your attention noise or a treat lure to get your puppy to turn around and come back to you. Pop, pop. What 
to do if your puppy doesn't turn around. One, practice from further away from the distraction. You can have a helper put down the distraction to make this easier. Two, use a lower value treat as the distraction and a higher value treat as the reinforcer. Step three, put a distraction down on the ground that makes the puppy pull on leash. When the puppy is on a tight leash, move in the opposite direction of the puppy without jerking him. Mark and reinforce when you see your puppy turn in your direction. If the puppy doesn't turn toward you within two seconds, use your attention noise or treat lure to get your puppy to turn around and come back to you. Good boy! Good boy! Mark the moment the puppy turns towards you and feed the puppy the treat Good. as close to your body as you can to train the puppy to come all the way to you. Mark and reinforce multiple times for the puppy Good being boy. at your side or being in front of you before you repeat the exercise. If your puppy sits or lays down, simply revert back to using the treat lure. So she went out, she felt the leash pressure, and that made her want to come back and not be on a tight leash. Basically, you're teaching the dog when they feel the tight leash, they should come near you to loosen the leash. Now, if you keep proofing this game, your dog is going to generalize it, so you can use different types of food, different types of toys, different types of people and dogs and uh, places to sniff, like a fire hydrant, um, you're going to teach your dog when they see things they want, the only way to get there is on a loose leash. Hey, Pop-Pops. So I'm going to move the distraction over here and do the game again. So pressure on the leash, click and feed. What you're not doing is jerking your dog. You're holding the leash against your body to move your dog. Job. And be careful that you don't back up and trip on something, because that happens to me a lot, especially in public. Step four, practice with different distractions in different situations. I suggest playing this game for one to two minutes, 10 to 12 times in the first few weeks that you own your new puppy or dog. This is Martina's Border Collie Lumos at six months, and you can see he has a positive emotional response when he feels the pressure on the leash, and he knows what to do when he feels the pressure. If you notice your dog starts to pull again, it's a great idea to go back and do brush-up training sessions. Here's an example of working on the leash pressure game with a high-level distraction. If something is too much for your dog, you'll notice that they won't be able to turn away from the distraction. So if this happens, you need to make the distraction less exciting or move further away from the distraction. If you're doing this exercise correctly, you'll find that your puppy will stop pulling altogether. This is a good thing. If he keeps trying to go for the distraction, it means the distraction is too difficult, too close, or you need to spend more time marking and reinforcing him for staying with you after he comes back. In real life situations, if your puppy starts pulling on leash, you can simply back up until he is on a loose leash, then wait a bit until you have made a connection with him again before walking forward. Here's a game to teach your dog to put his head in the harness. Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to show you a fun game you can play with your puppy or adult dog if they've started to have an aversion to having their harness put over their head and it touches their ears, for example. So my puppy started to show these signs that when I brought the harness towards him that he seemed to back away and not want to have it on his head. So instead of first working with the harness, I worked on this fun game where he put his head into an object that would then rub against his face in the same way that a harness would. So instead of putting the harness onto him, I had him put his nose 
into the object. So I have this cute little thing that I got at Ikea in the children's department. It's uh, for toys, for playing with children. Um, but you could use a cardboard box or, or whatever, just not a plastic bag, obviously. You don't want to have your puppy putting their head in a plastic bag. So um, also you don't want to leave out whatever it is that uh, you've been working on because you don't want your puppy putting their head into an object while you're not there. Okay, so the first step is simply putting a treat into the object and then letting the puppy eat the treat. And you might want to hold on to the object so the puppy doesn't get it stuck on their head or freak out when it starts to move around. And you can see he's a little bit nervous about that. This object is actually pretty cool because you can um, change the height of it. So um, I'm putting treats in there like that and he's just eating them out of there and gaining his confidence. I can also throw a treat away and see how fast he comes back to the object to go and sniff in it. Good job. I'm going to make it a little bit higher and he's eating the treats in there and he seems quite confident. So now I'm not going to hold on to it anymore and I'm going to put a treat into it and tell him to go get it and then he can go find the treat inside that object. Oops, I dropped a treat. There we go. Good job. Now I'm going to put a treat in there, say go get it. And then he's going to put his face in there and I can click and throw more treats into that object. Good boy. Now I'm going to pretend to throw a treat in like that. And then when he goes to put his head in, I'm going to click and then feed him inside of the object. And go back a step to him just getting a treat in there to make it easier for him. Go get it. Awesome. Now there's no treat. Good. Awesome. Good boy. You can then add a verbal cue. I like to use the cue, put it in. Ready? Put it in. Good boy. Put it in. Good. Put it in. Awesome. Put it in. Good. Good. Put it in. Good. Good boy. Good job. Good. Good. Pop, pop, pop. Good. 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 Stop biting clothes, shoes, and the leash. Hey everybody, today I'm going to be talking about how to teach your puppy not to mouth or bite at your clothing, accessories, or your hair. Good puppy. What I've already worked on with this pup, I've only had him a few days, is working on a calm settle for food which he's doing right now so I can talk to you. Now, naturally, when I train dogs, I never want to let them rehearse the undesirable behavior. So in my videos, you'll never see the dogs doing the things that they're not supposed to do. I only show you the small approximations of how to train the dog what you do want them to do. But in this case, because I get a lot of requests of people saying, hey, how come you're never using untrained dogs? It's because when you train with positive reinforcement, it always looks like the dog is already trained because you're breaking the steps up small enough that the dog can succeed every step of the way. So this puppy has never had any training with mouthing and biting, and I will show you that my puppy does mouth and bite at clothing when it moves around, but it's not very good training to do this. 
On this rare occasion, I will show the dog rehearsing the undesirable behavior. This is because the behavior of tugging is one I do want for when playing with tug toys in the future. Also, showing this specific undesirable behavior is not stressful for this dog. Seeing what the dog does in a situation before training actually makes the dog more likely to do those behaviors in the future. Instead, a smarter training plan is training in small, easily achievable steps where the dog doesn't even have a thought to do the undesirable behavior again. As you can see, this is a normal puppy. Puppies naturally want to grab at anything that moves fast or is dangling, like a dress or your hair or some jewelry or this dishcloth or a sweater sleeve as you're putting it on. So this is a normal puppy, but you'll see during the training, the puppy is not going to be doing this type of behavior. The point of this exercise is to teach the puppy that when things are dangling around, it means to ignore them, and you can still play tug with your dog, but it's really important to put that on a verbal cue like get it, and always say get it before you offer your dog a toy to tug on so they don't get the wrong idea that anything that's dangling in their face is fair game to be tugged on. In this exercise, you can either use a clicker or a verbal marker. So you can either click and then feed a treat, or I have a nice calm marker, good. That means I'm gonna slowly deliver the treat to the puppy like that. The game is pretty simple. You start off with distractions that are very easy for the puppy to ignore. So with this sweater, for example, if the puppy's over here settling, or you could have your puppy on a leash and you could have a helper, the helper's just going to show the sweater and move it slowly, and as you move it, you mark and then feed a treat. So the puppy is associating that when the sweater moves and they stay still, they get a click and a treat. And basically, you're training the puppy to do nothing when they see this happen. Good job. When your puppy is having success, you can start to make things more exciting. So I'm gonna move the sweater past the puppy like this. Good. Good job. I'm gonna dangle my sleeve. Good job. Good boy. Once your puppy has mastered settling with the distractions, you can now practice when you and your puppy are standing up and moving, which is harder for most puppies, so you'll need to go back to marking the moment the distraction happens at first to set your puppy up for success. Good. 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 Good job. Good. Good boy. Good job. When your puppy looks calm and can easily ignore the distraction, you can increase how long you make the distraction happen before you mark. You can also increase the difficulty of the distraction. Most puppies find fast, erratic movement harder to resist than slow, predictable movement. If you have a puppy that's extremely excited about grabbing moving things, you can feed the treat as you move the thing at first. So I'm moving this thing and feeding the puppy like that. Good job. And now I'm going to do the leash first and then mark and feed. Good. 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 If your puppy were to grab onto whatever it is that you're working with, put a high value treat to your dog's nose and then start over by making it much less arousing. Good. Also, I have a video on how to train the cue drop so that you can teach your puppy to let go of things that they start to pick up or they're tugging on. You can also use a kissy noise or the recall if you see your puppy going over to someone else to pull on their shoelaces or to get their clothing. You can make your kissy noise, attention noise, um, or call your puppy to you so that your puppy isn't practicing that behavior.
When you see your puppy get interested in something, like someone's shuffling feet or shoelaces, interrupt your puppy and redirect him to something you do want him to be doing, like playing with his toys. Then make a mental note to work on that specific distraction in a training session. Here's a list of the steps. Step one, mark as the distraction happens. Step two, mark after the distraction begins. Step three, add more time before you mark. Step four, add difficulty and variety to the training. For the most successful training, you want to work on the distractions before the puppy is exposed to them in real life. For example, having your kids move in front of your puppy for the first time in a training session and reinforcing your puppy for remaining calm as it happens, beginning first by having the kids simply walking past your puppy. I hope you found this video helpful for your training. If you'd like to support my work, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. You can also become a supporting member of channel Kiko Pup by clicking the join button.